Welcome everyone. In this video, we are going to prove the famous capacitor equation, which is that Q is equal to C times V. To be able to prove this formula, we should first discuss what a capacitor is. There are different uh, sorts of capacitors in real life, but today we will be dealing with the most basic one. A capacitor will be two parallel, oops, it will be two parallel plates, like so. We have two parallel plates. There is a distance of D, let's say, between these two, and the surface area of these two plates uh, is both S. Both of them have the same surface area. Now, if D is very less than S, the surface area, so if it is less compared to the surface area, if these two plates are close to one another, then there will be a uniform electric field between them. So let's say that that is the case. So D is small relative to the surface area. As a result, we have a relative, we have a uniform and uniform electric field. Like this. This is the electric field. And since we drew, drew it like this, we even decided on the charges of these two plates. They will have opposite but equal in magnitude charges. And the, uh, the electric field's line start from the positive. So this is the positive. Uh, let's put it like this. This is the positive plate. And electric field, li field lines end at the negative. So this right plate is the negative plate. We got this, and let's say that these two plates both have a charge of Q. This is plus Q then, and the other one is minus Q. I want to first start by finding a formula for the electric field. If we had one plate, if there wasn't any other one, if we had one, and if we were very close to it, or if the plate was huge, so our distance is pretty much negligible in this case, then we know that this electric, this electric field is going to be equal to sigma divided by epsilon naught. And if you wonder how this is correct, I have a video about the derivation. You can access it from the cards right now, also from the descriptions part. Here, the sigma is a surface charge density. It has the unit, let's denote the unit, it has the unit coulombs per square meters, and this epsilon naught is vacuum, vacuum permittivity, okay? So these are uh, two numbers in this case, and of course, I mean, I should put the magnitude of the electric field, because on the right we have two scalars, and on the left we should have a scalar as well, so this is the magnitude of the electric field. But this was the case. Oh, by the way, what did I do? This should be two. Oh, very sorry, my bad. In that video, I proved that the electric field's magnitude is sigma divided by two uh, epsilon naught. Okay, the two is very important. This was the case without another plate. But what if there is another plate? Well, if there is another plate, we will simply add the electric fields of both of these. And notice this, the electric field of the positive one will be to the right. It will be out of the positive. And the electric field of the negative will be to the left. Uh, no, it will be to the right. Uh, again, my bad. It will be to the right towards uh, the negative. So we have two electric fields in the same direction to the right. And when we add them, then we will get their sum because they are pointed in the same direction. Both of them will have this magnitude of sigma divided by 2 epsilon naught. So we basically have for the positive and for the negative, and we're adding their magnitudes to get the magnitude of the electric field. Okay, and I will represent this with like this. An E without an arrow on top of it. This means the magnitude of the electric field. Then this is equal to the magnitude of the positive electric field was sigma divided by 2 epsilon naught plus the other one is the same. 
epsilon naught since we are dealing with the magnitude and this gives us two epsilon uh, two sigma divided by two epsilon naught so we get sigma divided by epsilon naught cool now we have a formula for the magnitude of our electric field but how does this help us this helps us because we know what q uh, we know what not q we know what sigma is Sigma is, in the derivation video, we defined it as, and let's write it better, we defined it as the total charge per total area. Okay, this was the definition that we made. This is, of course, uniformly distributed charge. So, if we substitute that, and let's write it here, E is equal to, instead of sigma, I'm going to write Q divided by S, and we have epsilon naught. All right. Here, I want to, I mean, you might see that we're kind of getting close to our derivation because we now have Q. And in the original equation right here, we also had Q. So we might be on the right track, but we will need to see. We will need to wait to see, okay? We need to continue, actually, not wait. Never wait. So uh, for uh, getting V, we want to get voltage because this C it's kind of confusing. It is called the capacitance, but do we have a formula for it? Well, you might not know it if you don't know the derivation of this equation. So we actually want to arrive at V first, the voltage across. If we multiply both sides of this equation by D, if we have E times D, which is the distance between the two capacitors, it will be equal to QD divided by S epsilon naught. And by the definition of the voltage, the electric potential and the voltage, this left side will give us V, the voltage across. And I really want to talk about the definition for a little time and then we will continue. So the definition is like this. We define it as uh, V, well actually, yeah, let's do it like that. V will be equal to, actually, you know what, let's do it like this. The electric potential at some point R relative to another R0, a reference point, is equal to the negative, and then we have R0, R, E, dot product, dr. Here, if E is constant with respect to position, if it doesn't change with the position, we can simply take it out of the integral sign, and we will have it like this. Of course, it's magnitude only because we have a dot product. It gives a scalar. Then we have the integral of drs. Small, uh, infinitesimally small distances, which we, when we add up, gives us the total distance d. But we have a negative in front, so you might be wondering, where did the negative go in our equation? Well, for our equation, for our purposes, we only consider the magnitude of the voltage, okay? Voltage is the potential difference between two, uh, between two points, electric potential difference. So we only take this, its magnitude, that's why we don't put the negative, but it is quite important in more complex problems that we know this, de uh, this definition and stick to it, okay? This was a side note if anyone was wondering how E times D in our case gives V. It comes from the definition, okay? So we have V because, as I said, let's color code it. This blue part gave us V, voltage. And it came from the definition and the fact that electric field is constant for our case. Here we have Q. And then we have three numbers. Not three numbers, but three quantities that are constant. We have D, the distance between the capacitors. It is a constant. Divided by S, the surface area, it is, of course, a constant. And epsilon naught, the permittivity of vacuum, it is clearly a constant. So, if we look at this, we say that we have a constant here. This green part is just a constant the part that I circled with orange, this is a constant. All right? And then why not I represent it with C, you could say. I, let's do it like V is equal to QC. Why not? Right? Why not? And in fact, 
there is no reason that uh, no reason at all that this doesn't work this would be correct i mean this is just a definition and you can define your constant however you want this would be correct really it would be correct but historically and i am not really sure about the reason but historically scientists didn't define this as c instead they defined this constant as one over c okay they defined it as one over the capacitance as a result we have let's do it on the new page maybe as a result we have v is equal to q and we defined that constant as one over c so if we multiply both sides by c we can see that q is equal to cv and this is a very very useful formula here i want to um, write the definition of c one more time because it is just a definition that is all it is but it makes sense i i actually can understand why they chose it like this and i will explain my thought process so we defined c as 1 over c was d divided by s times epsilon naught. So c will be its reciprocal, which is epsilon naught s divided by d. This is the definition of capacitance, and this should be a capital C. It wasn't very clear, perhaps. So the reason be behind this definition, I believe, is that when s increases, the surface area increases, the capacitance of the capacitor increases. It is able to store more, uh, let's see, store more charge with the same voltage. Okay? And then, and it makes sense. If you have a greater surface area, you should be able to store more uh, charge. And if the distance between the capacitors decrease, then they are more closely bounded together. And we, again, are able to have greater charges or using the same charge uh, less less voltage no yeah less voltage okay so that kind of stuff i guess that was the reason that they defined it because capacitance is really a great way to think of s and d when s increases capacitance is increasing it is a greater capacitor so it has a greater capacitance so i guess perhaps that was why they chose it like this but if anyone know what happened historically i would really love to hear that so write that in the comment section please but this is it we just proved that q is equal to c times v q here is the charge of the capacitors the positive uh, the charge of the positive capacitor to be specific c is a constant which we call the capacitance and v is the voltage across the capacitance I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions, please write them in the comment section. I hope to see you in another video. Until then, take care.